Hey everyone and welcome back. In today's video, we'll be breaking down the police pension. In the UK, police pensions are governed by a complex set of regulations that can be confusing to navigate. But understanding how police pensions work is crucial for both serving officers and for those that have retired or planning to retire in the near future. In this video, I will provide an overview of the police pension here in the UK, including the different types of pensions available, how they are calculated and what benefits they offer. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. Pow. So what are police pensions? Police pensions are retirement plans specifically designed for police officers. These pensions, like any other pensions, are designed to provide financial security when these individuals seek out retirement. There are three types of police pension schemes you have. You have the 1987, 2006 and 2015 scheme. In this video, we will be focusing on the 2015 scheme as this is the most active pension currently. If you do want me to do a video touching on the 2006 and 1987, please do let me know down below. Anyway, regardless of which pension scheme you are in, all three are types of defined benefit schemes, which means the amount you get will be determined by your years of service and your salary. And the amount of pension benefits you accrue while you are working will be paid out to you for life once you retire until the day you die. So how do you get involved? Well, chances are you didn't need to do anything as you would have already been enrolled automatically when you joined the police force. If you have joined, you do have the option to opt out. However, as I always say with pensions, if you do opt out, please think carefully and seek out professional advice. We all need a way to fund our elderly years and pensions are one of the best vehicles to do so. So if it's not gonna be your workplace pension, then think about what it is going to be instead. You do have to pay in to be in the scheme, but how much you have to pay is dependent on your salary. The numbers I am about to mention are relevant for the 23 to 24 tax year, but be sure to check the rates if you watch this video at a later date as it is subject to change. As you can see, if you have a salary of less than 27,000 pounds, you will contribute 12.44% of your salary. If you earn more than 27,000 pounds, but less than 60,000 pounds, you will contribute 13.44%. And for those that are 60,000 and above, you will contribute 13.78%. Now there are two things that I do want to clean up when it comes to contribution rates, as these are quite common questions I get whenever I talk about pensions. So the first one is to remember that this is a defined benefits pension. So the amount you have to pay has absolutely nothing to do with how much you'll get from the pension when you retire. This is what happens in a defined contribution scheme instead. But as this is a defined benefit scheme, this means any contributions you do make allows you to accrue pension benefits that determine your final retirement salary. We will go through how your pension benefits are calculated later on in this video. And secondly, contributing to your pension may seem like a large chunk, but what you may not know is that you do get tax benefits when you contribute to your pension. So for example, let's say I earn 25,000 pounds a year. If I enrolled into the scheme, I would have to contribute 12.55% of my salary, which works out to be 3,137 pounds. If we were to break down my paycheck over the course of the year, it would look something like this. My taxable income works out to be 9,292 pounds and 50 pence because everyone does get a tax-free allowance of 12,570 and I'm also contributing around about 3,000 pounds to my pension. I will then also pay income tax and national insurance tax, which takes around 3,533 pounds from my take-home pay. So at the end of the year, my take-home pay would have been 18,329 pounds and 50 pence. Now let's say I didn't contribute anything to my pension. My taxable income would become 12,430 with income tax and national insurance tax taking another 4,132 pounds. So that means in this scenario, my take home pay every year would be 20,537 pounds. So let's compare the two to understand what this means. So although we spent 3,137 pounds on our pension, it actually only costs us around about 2,400 pounds, which means that this is an equivalent of 9.5% rather than 12.55%. And that is because we saved around about 600 pounds in taxes. So in real terms, the percentage numbers are actually a lot less than what appears on this screen. You know what costs absolutely nothing? Hitting that subscribe button. Now let's move on to how you can calculate your benefits to help you figure out how much you can be earning from this pension scheme. So the 2015 scheme, which is the latest scheme, is a type of career average revalued earning scheme or CARE for short, which means your pension benefits are based on your average salary throughout your career. 
there are two components that help determine how much benefits you get per year. So first is the build up rate, which works out to be one over 55.3 of your pensionable earnings. And secondly, you have the CPI plus 1.25%. For those that don't know, CPI is one of the common ways we measure inflation. It stands for the consumer price index. And it basically means your pension will increase annually by the rate of inflation plus 1.25%. So let's jump straight into an example to better explain how this works. So the example I prepared is that we have a starting salary of 25,000 pounds. Now I have put some assumptions just to achieve what could be considered an average pension for the police pension scheme. So let's imagine we are 25 and we plan to work in the police force until we are 60. So we will be in the scheme for 35 years. Our salary increases 2,000 pounds every three years to account for career progression. And the CPI is fixed at 2% every year, which is actually the Bank of England target. So looking at the spreadsheet, you can see in year one, our starting value is zero as this is our first year and our benefits increase by 155.3 of our salary, which equals 452 pounds and eight pence. And this is revalued by the CPI plus 1.25%. So we add another 14 pounds and 69 pence on top. That means after year one, our pension benefits stand at 466 pounds and 77 pence. That means if we stopped contributing to the scheme, when we retire, this would be the amount we would get every year until the day we die. If we now look at year two, our salary is still 25,000 pounds and our starting value is last year's value of 466. Over the course of year two, it builds by another 452 pounds and it is revalued for inflation plus the 1.25%, which is another 30 pounds. That means after year two, our pension benefits would be 948 pounds and 71 pence per year until the day we die. Now let's fast forward 33 years into the future where we are now 60 years old. Remember our salary does increase by 2000 pounds every three years, which means our salary is now 47,000 pounds. At the age of 60, our pension benefits equal to almost 40,000 pounds per year, which will be paid out to us until the day we die. So that is basically how the pension benefits are calculated for the police pension. So I do hope that made sense. I'll put a copy of this spreadsheet in the description box down below. If you do want to have a play around with it, all you have to do is change rows two to three uh, to fit to what you think is going to be a more appropriate example. So now that we know how much the pension costs and how much we can expect, when can we actually access it? So you can access your pension once you reach your normal pension age, which is at 60 years old. So once you've hit 60, you can access your police pension without any penalty. However, that is not the earliest you can access it. That is actually the normal minimum pension age, which is at 55 years old. However, by accessing your pension before your normal pension age, your benefits will reduce to account for the early payout. The amount it reduces by will depend on how early from your normal pension age you access it. It is worth noting that if you do become ill of health before your normal pension age, you may be able to gain access to your pension early without any penalty based on these grounds. I'll put a link in the description box down below if you would like to find out more. So aside from getting a pension income for life, there are also some other noteworthy benefits that come with the police pension. So number one, you can choose to trade some of your benefits as a cash free lump sum on retirement. The maximum lump sum amount is 25% of your pension that you can get. And typically this will be tax free, but do check the latest tax rules when you are close to that opportunity. Please do bear in mind that if you do take, let's say 25% as a lump sum on retirement, your benefits will be reduced to the 75% equivalent. So in our early example, where we almost had 40,000 pounds on retirement, if we took out a 25% lump sum amount, our benefits would be reduced to 75%, which would be almost 30,000 pounds rather than 40,000 pounds. And secondly, you do have special provisions if you are forced to retire early due to ill health. Again, I put a link in the description box down below, and that is just because there are so many variables at play here. So if there is anything you are unsure about, feel free to drop me a comment down below and I can try and assist you on that. Benefit number three is that your pension benefits, although at a reduced amount, will continue to pay out after your death to your dependents. So it will pay out to your spouse or civil partner for the rest of their lives too. Another individual may be nominated instead, but you would have to declare this as a declared partner. And it also pays out to any children of yours until they are aged 23. And lastly, if you happen to build on your pension but pass away as an active member, a lump sum death grant will be made payable to your dependents, which is equivalent to around about three times your final pay. And the last thing I want to cover is how you can increase the amount of pension benefits you can earn 
from the police pension. So you can opt to make additional pension payments in order to increase your retirement benefits for a certain period. If you go ahead with doing this, you have the option to make these additional payments in lump sum amounts or in monthly installments. The maximum amount of added pension that can be purchased for any tax year is reviewed annually by His Majesty's Treasury. And currently the maximum you can additionally contribute is £6,500 per year. It is important to understand that just with how you regularly contribute to your police pension, the amount you put in doesn't represent how much pension benefits you will earn. The Scottish Public Pensions Agency website have a calculator which you can download below to help you calculate how much benefits you can expect when you do add additional contributions. I will put a link to this calculator down below. One little technical side note is that this calculator does run on Excel and uses these things called macros. And sometimes by default, your PC will block external macros. So to resolve this, all you have to do is right click on the file, go onto properties and click unblock where I've just shown here. This option will only appear once you've opened the file initially and it prompts you that the macro has been blocked. Anyway, back to the calculator. So although this is used for the Scottish police workforce, it does seem that the rules apply for the rest of the UK. So it is really helpful to get a rough estimate of what you can get. So the first couple of options are just your personal details, which I'll just glaze over. And then we come to the part of the form where it asks you how you would like to pay for it. We have the lump sum and monthly contribution options. It is worth noting that one method is not better off than the other. They both result in the same output. You can get tax relief via both options too. So make sure you follow up with your PAYE or HMRC to ensure that this is being enforced. The next is the type of additional pensions you would like to pay for. So you have two options here, self only additional pensions and all beneficiaries additional pensions. So the difference between the two is that the self only AP will only increase your own retirement benefits. If you recall earlier, one of the perks of the police pension is that your beneficiaries also get a payout when you pass away. By selecting self only, the increase in your pension will have no impact on the amount your beneficiaries will get from the pension when you pass away. If you do select all dependencies AP, then any additional pension will reflect on yours and the dependencies pension as well. Let's go to monthly contributions and pay a fixed amount of £250 per month, which equates to £3,000 per year. For a self-only AP, this will add £266 to your pension benefits for life. So basically the amount that we got from the spreadsheet earlier, which was around about £40,000, you can just add this amount on top and this is what your new pension benefits will be. Changing this to the all beneficiaries AP, your pension benefits will increase by £234 for you and your dependencies will get an increase of 50% of this, which works out to be £117.37. So as you can see, the benefits for yourself do reduce quite a lot between the self and all beneficiaries pension, which kind of makes sense given how the two work. But it is worth noting that you can change the type of additional pension per tax year. So in one year, you can select self AP, and then in year two, you can select for all beneficiaries AP instead. So you do have that added flexibility there. So that is police pensions explained. I know there was probably a lot of stuff that I missed, but do check out this video here where I go into the McLeod judgment, which also affected the police pension. But yeah, anything else, do let me know in the comment section down below. And remember to like and subscribe. Bye. Bow.